What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. Let's start off with a little cold start of the Ford Focus RS. If you guys are new here, make sure you guys smash that subscribe button. Today we have a few things planned. Huge shout out to Lace Fit for hooking us up with some new LED bulbs. Check out, we got the high beams, low beams, and fog lights right here. I can't wait to get those in because right now we're rocking the halogen orange lights and trust me, they don't look so good. Then if you watched the last video, I promised I'd show you guys how to update your Sync 3 system. This car right here is a 2016 Ford Focus RS and we're running Sync 3 software 3.4. Now that is not an official Ford update. We did have to do a little hack. I will show you how later in this video. And then right here we have this special part. It is a, I didn't even open it yet actually. It is a USB hub. In 2016, they did not have Apple CarPlay, but in 17 and on, they did. Now, since we updated the Sync 3 system, all we have to do now is update the USB hub. And supposedly we will have Apple CarPlay now. Let's make our way over to the garage and tear into this. I'll show you guys the horrible before headlights and then we'll get these lace fits in. Then I'll show you how to hack your system three and hopefully you can get CarPlay in your older Ford. Yeah, shout out to Safety Restore for these blue seatbelts. Blend in so well with the RS logo and the Recaro stitching. Make our way over to the garage, get these things installed. Today is 52 degrees, so it's not gonna be too bad to work on the car. I mean, last week it was literally negative seven degrees here in Pennsylvania. I hate working on anything in the cold. Just, it, it hurts your hands. Just hate wrenching in the cold. Well, let's get this thing in sport mode. Downshift and let's go. You gotta love the pops. From factory, this thing got some exhaust pops and it sounds so good. You can hate on four cylinders all day, but they did an amazing job with the Focus RS. So they haven't made this car in a few years. They have not made a car this fun since. <laughs> this thing just feels so planted on the road. Good bit of water up here. We better slow her down a little bit. This PA weather is wild. It can be cold one day and the next day it's a full blown blizzard. And then the next day it's back to warm weather. I don't get it. If it's gonna be cold, I do want it to snow because I do do a lot of snowboarding. I'll catch you back at the garage. Today we're gonna be... Right. Today we're gonna be swapping these orange outdated halogen bulbs for these new LED bulbs from Lace Fit. And then I'll show you the fog lights as well. Click. Look at that, I'm not a fan of that color at all. We got the white daytime running light and then the orange halogen lights, in my opinion, can look a whole lot better with some whiter lights. Let's get our tool set out the back, our trusty heart toolbox. We got all the tools we need in here. It's like the only way to access the bulbs is take out this bolt and this bolt here. There's no way to get in there from behind. The radiator support brace is blocking it. Let me pop these out real quick. Took about 1.1 seconds and we got the headlight loose. Let's get in here and get the bulb out. There, we got the lace fit LED low beams installed. Did run into one problem though. I guess we had a little mix up on the ordering. I guess I ordered the wrong size headlights. We're actually looking for the high beams. We need H1 and for the fog lights, I believe we need an H8. Right here, we have two sets of H11s. So. I'll be sending those back to Lace Fit. Either way, we did halfway freshen it up today. We do got the LED low beams in there along with the LED daytime running light. When we go over here and here and switch on the high beams, we still got them orange halogen bulbs. But as far as the actual bulbs, I guess I could open one for you. Got it suction cupped. And honestly, the first thing you notice right off the bat is the quality of packaging. Right here, Lace Fit, safe and stylish. When you open it up, Here's the actual bulb and check out that fan on the back. And I guess this part right here is the LED baluster. But yeah, like I said, these are H11s. We need H1s for the high beams and H8 for the fog light. Not a big deal. I guess there's a mix up on my end. I just thought it took different bulbs for some reason. I must have read that for my other car. I guess we're done under the hood for now. I'll get the two other sets of bulbs squared away. But as far as these low beams, I couldn't be more happier. Shout out again, Lace Fit, for hooking us up, getting us some updated lighting for the Focus RS. Pretty soon it'll be dark. I'll put these headlights to the test. Oh, so you think you know a little bit about headlights, huh? Yeah. These are all these. These are high beams. These are driving lights. These are fog lights. Yes, you. That's actually right on, bud. 
Oh wow. Now let's jump into updating that Apple CarPlay. But your screen, <laughs> here, take us inside. Your screen's already cracked. But I don't care, daddy buys me everything. Oh, okay, spoiled. Next step, I'll walk you through updating the infotainment system. I'll show you guys how to get Sync 3 version 3.4 on your older Ford. And in this box right here, we have ourselves an updated USB port. As you can see, we have one right there, but I'll have to explain what this one does. Bro, what do you want, dude? I'm just trying to break into the focus, that's all. Bro, we're updating the infotainment system and adding some Apple CarPlay. You know anything about that? Oh, uh, no. Have a good day. Okay, see you later. So it's my understanding Apple CarPlay came out in 2017 with Ford. Well, this Focus RS is a 2016. What? But what? from factory, they didn't have Apple CarPlay on the Sync 3 that came from factory. Therefore, the USB ports were not equipped with the function of Apple CarPlay. So in order to get Apple CarPlay on an older Ford that it didn't come with from factory, is you have to update this to version Sync 3 version 3.4. And that is the factory USB hub. We gotta swap that out with the updated one that is able to handle Apple CarPlay. So let's get this USB hub swapped out and then I'll walk you through the steps on how to get Sync 3 software version 3.4. As you can see a little bit down there, we got it loose. The penny did the trick. We had to get underneath the lip of that and pop it out. We had to get underneath the lip of that and pop it out. Let me get back to let me go let me go back to the screwdriver a little wiggle here we're almost out i might need two hands for this let that loose let's wiggle it out and there we are we have wires we got to unplug and then plug our new hub in plug our apple lightning cord in and we should fingers crossed we should have apple carplay on our 2016 ford focus rs we got our new usb hub plugged in got our lightning cable right here let's plug in our cable find the other end of it what is this like a six foot cord we have my phone right here i really hope this works apple carplay is such a cool feature now let's plug us in come on come on come on yes yes it finally works. It looks like we have the Apple CarPlay feature. CarPlay lets you use your iPhone in a way that allows you to stay focused on the road. Yes, I know how Apple CarPlay works. I'm just glad it's in this car now. Continue. Privacy in terms of use. Okay, agree. Skip this step. Come on, something should be popping up. Unlock your iPhone and start CarPlay. CarPlay. Unlock. Let's go. We got Apple CarPlay in the Focus RS. Let's not leak our address or anything. Just like that, a 20 minute update to the infotainment system and a quick USB hub swap. We now have Apple CarPlay. Well, I guess it's time I show you how to update the system now that I know that it works. We need the computer for that, so I'll catch you back in the office. We're here at the office. I'm about to show you how to update your Sync 3 to at least version 3.4. Now first, before we get into anything, I do want to say, do this at your own risk. There is risk involved. I mean, you could potentially brick your system. There could be severe lagging. That usually happens if you put in the wrong version you had previously. I'll show you here in a minute because we have to download a file specifically for the version that you had before. Do your research. I'm just sharing my experience and what I did to get Apple CarPlay on my 2016 Ford Focus RS. I'm just saying I'm not responsible for you ruining your system if something did go haywire. There's plenty of information on this forum so you can look what works, what doesn't. Just please do your research. I was willing to take the risk. I really wanted Apple CarPlay. Worst case scenario, what? I go out and buy a new infotainment system from Ford. Not what anyone wants to do, but worst case scenario, I was willing to do that. About 400,000 people downloaded this, so you should be good to go. Now, you'd only want to use this website if the official Ford website does not offer the update that you are looking for. In my case, my car was a 2016. It was only offering, I think, uh, version one point something. I'm looking for version 3.4. Anyways, if you're still interested, let's jump into this download procedure and get our car updated. Okay, let's get started. Head over to cyanlabs.net. The home page will look like this. I'm not 100% sure what this website does, but I do know it works. I know they deal with a lot of software changes, updates, and hacks. I saw some Xbox stuff. I saw some Windows stuff, but today we're going to be working with the Ford stuff. So as you can see at the top of the home screen, you can see Sync 3 Updater 2.0. You want to view that application. Scroll down, you can see the warning. It is not licensed or endorsed or associated with Ford Motor Company, like I mentioned earlier. And then you head 
on down to the bottom under download. Your download will begin shortly. We can jump, since I already downloaded it, you can see it over here. I will open it up. Yes, I wanna make changes. And as you can see, it is loading. And this is where you wanna grab your USB drive. On the website, it did mention that you want about 32 gigs if you're downloading navigation as well. Me personally, I decided to go with a 64 gigabyte one, so I didn't run out of space. It is a Walmart thumb drive, just a couple of dollars. And then just plug it into your computer. You do wanna make sure there's nothing valuable in that thumb drive as we are gonna be reformatting it. Now let's jump over to the installer. First thing first, let's head over to this information tab up here. As you can see in this disclaimer box, it pretty much goes over everything of what I already mentioned in this video. Do you wanna mark it that I understand? It should take you back to this settings screen. Now listen up guys, this part right here is extremely important so you do not brick your system. See right here, this box says incorrect information may render your API M temporarily or permanently unusable. So what you're gonna to wanna to do now is go out to your car, go to your settings, go to about sync, Pull up the screen that shows what version you're currently running. What you're gonna wanna do is either write it down or even easier, take a picture. If you wanna double check, make sure you don't get this wrong. So once you have your information, you're gonna wanna start plugging it in here. When you look at yours, it's gonna look something pretty similar to this screen right here. You're obviously gonna have some different numbers. As you can see, this drop down menu has all the previous versions that you could be running. My car is running version 2.2, build 17011. So right here, 2.2 .2 build 17011. You click that one right there. Obviously I'm in the region of the United States. Pick where you want to download this. And this feature right here is auto detect. So that means when you plug it into your car, it's just gonna automatically start downloading. Apply settings. And then you're here at this screen. This message right here is why I mentioned earlier that you want probably at least 32 gigs. Planning non-navigation should be fine with eight gigabytes and so on. So you wanna go to this drop down menu, you wanna click the flash drive that you plugged in. For me, it'll be this one. It says Cyan Labs because I previously used this same flash drive. So I'm gonna click that region, United States. What version do I wanna go with? I wanna go with the top one. That is the latest version, version 3.4 build 22251. This message right down here just says it's going to delete everything on the flash drive and reformat it. It's gonna be auto detect. When you plug it into your car, it's gonna automatically start downloading. And then you just wanna hit start. Then this pretty much is the question, is your car manufactured in 2022 or newer? No. Do you want to format the selected USB drive? Yes. And it's just saying everything in that drive will be lost? Yes. And just like that, it is downloading. Now it does take some time because the file is pretty large. Anyways, wait till this is done downloading onto your USB drive. The download is done. When you look at the flash drive, it used uh, 13 or so gigs. Here's all of our files we're gonna be installing onto our infotainment system. Then after the download is complete, all you need to do is pull out your thumb drive and plug it into your car. Now everyone says your car needs to be running because if your screen shuts off halfway through the download, that could go very, very bad. Get in your car, turn it on, plug your thumb drive in. I used the USB port by the gear shifter. Since that auto detect feature was installed on this, as soon as you plug it in, you're gonna see your system go completely whack. And then I saw a Mustang logo pop up. It took my car about, I don't know, 25 minutes, give or take. And then it said, update is complete. I removed it. I believe the system restarted and then boom, it updated. But I was wondering if it was gonna keep my RS logo when I go to turn my car on. So I did shut off my car. I turned my car back on. And yes, the RS logo was exactly like it originally was. Now I did run into one small error. It did say my USB hubs were not supported. I already knew that because in my situation to get Apple CarPlay, I needed to update my USB hub because in 2016, they did not have Apple CarPlay from factory. I ended up buying a USB hub from the Ford dealership because I read online that there's a lot of clones and I just wanted to make sure I got it done right from the start. So yeah, pretty much updating my infotainment system to version 3.4 and buying a $70 USB hub. I was able to get Apple CarPlay in my 2016 Ford Focus RS. I will say, make sure you're using an OEM Apple Lightning cable because I tried my generic one and it didn't work. But it works flawless with an OEM Apple Lightning cable. So yeah, that's pretty much what you need to update your system. So if you have any questions, make sure you comment down below. If you have any real technical software questions, head over to cyanlabs.net and read the form. There's plenty of stuff on there to help you out. Once again, if you enjoyed the video, please give this video a thumbs up. If you guys are new here, make sure you guys smash that subscribe button. And as always, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.